best drivers talks about Ford quality. Nobody expects a luxury car to be quick. But watch this Continental Mark 7 LSC. Back in 1956, Ford introduced the Mark II as the first car of its new flagship Continental division. It would soon evolve into one of the classic personal luxury coupes of the 70s and 80s, competing directly with Cadillac's Eldorado. Although sold at Lincoln dealerships, the Mark series was badged as a Continental and didn't officially become a Lincoln until 1986. Although the Mark VIII would be the last, Lincoln would later pay homage to the Mark name with its MK name vehicles in the 2000s. This is the story of the Lincoln Mark series. This is my old car. Quality you can feel. Ford, you'll feel the quality because quality is job one. Thanks for the many suggestions to review the Lincoln Mark series. I've also gotten requests for the LS, the Town Car, and the Lincoln Continental, which served as companion to the Mark series during much of its production. Each of these cars are being considered for future episodes. Before I get started, I would like to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Surfshark is the fastest growing VPN brand in the world and is an affordable and easy to use VPN service that can help protect your online data by stopping third parties from accessing your information online. This includes scanning your credit cards to see if any of your personal data has been breached. Surfshark also allows you to view content that is not available in your area. Just log into your Surfshark account and change your region. You can even block pop-ups with their cookie pop-up blocker. Click the link in the description below and enter the promo code MYOLDCAR and Surfshark will give you an extra 83% off and 3 extra months for free. All that and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Now back to today's episode. Although Ford's Lincoln division has typically been paired historically with Cadillac as its chief rival. From whatever angle you view these cars, Lincoln's styling is obviously more distinctive. Ford's post-war plan was to create a new division to slot above Lincoln and market it as one of the most exclusive automobiles in the world. The name of that new division was Continental, taken from a Lincoln model that began in 1939. The inaugural model line for the new Continental division was the Mark II, a name which Ford believed would align them more with European automakers, who used the Mark nomenclature to designate successive generations of each model, and they still do today. Except in this case, Mark would be the model name itself, and be numbered as two for being the successor to the pre-war Continental model. Introduced for 1956, the Continental Mark II was not only Ford's most expensive model, but the most expensive American car that year. At $10,000, which is over $95,000 today, you could buy two Cadillacs for that price. Other than the spare tire hump and the rear deck lid, which was actually functional back then considering where the spare tire was located, the rest of the car was fairly subdued compared to the more daring designs that were becoming common in the late 50s. With the Mark II being a mostly hand-assembled car, that expense couldn't be maintained long term. Later in 1956, the Continental Division was merged back with Lincoln, and in 1958, the Mark II was replaced with the Continental Mark III, costing 40% less and sharing production lines and platforms with other Lincoln vehicles. It was replaced by the Mark IV in 1959 and the Mark V in 1960, each of them being marketed as Lincoln Continentals. These early Mark III through V cars are not the same as later models that use the same names and since they each only lasted one year, they are sometimes referred to as the Forgotten Marks. By 1961, the Mark series was retired, at least in the short term, and the Continental was the only model name in the entire Lincoln lineup, and would eventually become an iconic look for the 1960s, thanks to its rear suicide doors, even on convertible models. How was the drive, Daddy? In the Lincoln? But with the personal luxury coupe market heating up, Ford brought back the Mark name, Although the last model to have the name was the Mark V, the new for 1969 model wasn't the Mark VI, it instead was the Mark III, as if Lincoln wanted everyone to forget those other models existed. The Mark III is America's most prestigious automobile. And it also went back to being branded as a Continental, with no Lincoln badging, despite being sold in Lincoln Mercury dealerships alongside other Lincoln Continental models. Using the name Continental as a make was clearly intended to make the Mark series appear to be the top end model, but instead it probably just created needless confusion for potential buyers. Faster! You're an awful driver. The Mark III, although being rear wheel drive, was intended to compete directly with the front wheel drive Cadillac Eldorado. Like the Eldorado, the Mark III sold only as a coupe, as opposed to earlier Continentals, which were available as coupes and sedans. Despite the shared Continental name and being a two door, the Mark III used a chassis design of the Ford Thunderbird four-door sedan, 
whereas the Continental was body on frame, sharing a modified version of the Mercury Marquee chassis, and the Mark III continued the trademark spare tire hump, despite the spare tire no longer being mounted there. Despite only having two doors, it was still huge, at 18 feet long, needing a 460 cubic inch 7.5 liter V8 to move over 2.5 tons, almost 300 pounds heavier than the Thunderbird. During the Mark III's three-year run, it still didn't beat the Eldorado in sales, but it came closer than it ever had before. 1972 marked the start of the Mark IV, now an entire foot longer, and continuing to share parts with the Thunderbird to save costs. That extra foot in length added almost 400 pounds, making it over 400 pounds heavier than its chief rival, the Eldorado. For all of the 1970s, this will be the unique American car. Although the classic opera windows were technically an option in 1972, they were so popular that it became standard a year later. By 1976, those opera windows could have famous designer names inscribed on them as part of special designer editions from Bill Blass, Cartier, Givenchy, and Pucci. If there were any cars back then that were audacious enough to be considered pimp mobiles, the Continental Mark IV belonged at the top of that list. The Mark V began in 1977, growing another two inches, becoming the largest two-door coupe Ford ever offered. And isn't it ironic? Don't you think? It remained on the same platform as the Mark IV, but it was now the only car on that platform, with the Ford Thunderbird and Mercury Cougar moving to a smaller platform. Despite the Mark V being slightly longer than its predecessor, in the interest of fuel economy, Ford engineers managed to carve out an extra 400 pounds and they also dropped the base engine size to a 400 cubic inch 6.6 .6 liter, which made only 179 horsepower. Although you could still get the larger 7.5 liter V8, all the Mark V's came with functional vents on the front fenders to help dissipate heat. 1978 marked Ford's 75th anniversary, so Lincoln offered a Diamond Jubilee edition with almost all options standard and a hefty $8,000 increase in price. The Mark V would end just three years later, 1980 was the first year of a significant downsizing across many Ford and Mercury models, and Lincoln joined in as well. Despite being 14 inches shorter than the Mark V, the Mark VI still maintained its designation as a full-size vehicle, now sharing a rear-drive body-on-frame Panther platform with the Ford LTD Crown Victoria and Mercury Grand Marquis, and it also gained the option of four doors. And now there's yet another new Mark, the Mark VI Ford, Continental Mark VI, still unmistakably marked. The Lincoln Continental also switched to the same platform that year, making it so similar to the Continental Mark VI that Ford couldn't justify the two existing in that same form beyond that year. The Lincoln Continental would skip the 1981 model year and return for 1982 as a smaller car based on the Fox body platform. Starting in 1984, the new Mark VII would be yet another radical change for the Mark series, now downsizing to the Fox body platform and again sharing the platform of the Thunderbird and Cougar. This redesign brought the Mark in line with a new, more aerodynamic look, becoming more common across the Ford and Mercury divisions, being the first among them to get composite headlamps. Although it still had the signature spare tire bump in the rear, it was less prominent to reduce drag. It shared the same 4.9 liter V8 from the Ford Mustang, and was the first North American car with four-channel anti-lock brakes. There was also a new trim level called the LSC, or Luxury Sport Coupe, added in 1984 which had a firmer suspension, sportier seats, and even the interior wood trim was removed. Keep in mind that since the Mark III in 1969, the Mark series was still being branded as a Continental, not a Lincoln, and there was a separate Continental model being badged as a Lincoln. Since they still both had the Lincoln logos throughout the car, many today incorrectly refer to these earlier Mark models as Lincolns. Even the code that designated the make within the vehicle identification number, or VIN, was different between the two models. Ford finally rectified this long-standing confusion in 1986, with the Continental Mark VII being renamed to the Lincoln Mark VII. The Mark VII would also be the longest-running generation, lasting until 1992. 1993 would be the start of the Lincoln Mark VIII, the first and last Mark Series car to begin its generation branded as a Lincoln. Although still similar to the Thunderbird and Cougar, the Mark VIII's platform was known as FN10, which was a Lincoln-exclusive variant of the MN12 platform used by Ford and Mercury. Please be seated. The performance is about to begin. Although the Mark 7 had far more curves than the Mark 6, the Mark 8 took the rounded look to even more extremes, making it nearly unrecognizable to what it was just 10 years earlier. It's like Beethoven. 
with an attitude. Aerodynamics was also improved with a suspension that slightly lowered the car during highway speeds. The spare tire hump on the rear deck lid remained, sort of, now just looking like a styling element instead of emulating a spare tire. Although the Mark 8 still competed with the Cadillac Eldorado, they were both competing with newer European and Japanese offerings, making the luxury coupe market all the more crowded, despite less and less customers as the 90s rolled on. Lincoln brought back the LSC trim for 1995 and a restyling for 1997, but it couldn't change the downward trend in sales. The last Mark 8 rolled off the line on June 9, 1998. Lincoln considered the newly introduced LS model as the Mark 8's official replacement, but that was a bit of a stretch, considering the LS was a four-door. But this wasn't the end of Lincoln using the Mark name. For 2001, Lincoln introduced the Mark 9 concept, although it was spelled MK9, a nomenclature that Lincoln would later adopt for other production cars. But the Mark 9 never went beyond the concept. It was followed in 2004 by the Mark 10, but spelled as Mark X. X is the Roman numeral 10, but of course most who saw it called it the Mark X. This one shared the platform of the retro-styled Ford Thunderbird convertible, but minus the retro look. It too never went beyond the concept. The last production car that Lincoln officially gave the Mark name to came in early 2005 for the 2006 model year, although it wasn't actually a car, but instead a truck, the Lincoln Mark LT. The Mark LT wasn't Lincoln's first truck. That honor goes to the 2002 Lincoln Blackwood, a rebadged Ford F-150 with a carpeted truck bed that failed so spectacularly that it was canceled after just one model year, which makes the idea of Lincoln trying another truck all the more surprising. The Mark LT was also a rebadged F-150, but at least it had a truck bed that actually could be used like a truck bed. Its primary competitor was the Cadillac Escalade EXT, which itself was a rebadged Chevy Avalanche, and it didn't take long for the Cadillac to beat the Lincoln in sales, resulting in the Mark LT ending sales in the US and Canada by 2008. Although Ford did produce a second gen model from 2010 to 2014 for Mexico, where it was Lincoln's best selling model. Despite the Mark LT being another disappointment, Lincoln still wanted to carry on the Mark name in some form. Cadillac had started renaming its cars with alphanumeric designations a few years earlier, beginning with the CTS. And European and Japanese luxury brands had been doing the same for many years before. Starting in 2007, Lincoln started renaming its cars to three letter names, each starting with the letters MK. That MK was intended to be pronounced as Mark, similarly to how it is used in Europe. The problem was that almost no one in America knew that MK was supposed to be pronounced as Mark, so the end result was Lincoln had to soon drop the idea of referring to them as Mark, and instead refer to them as MK like everybody else. The new three letter names didn't end up on all their cars. The town car and navigator didn't change, but it didn't take long for the buying public to easily confuse the names on their other cars. I mean, take a big step back. Like go from winning an Oscar to doing a car commercial. Lincoln finally took the complaint seriously when they brought back the Continental name in 2017 and started renaming their other cars to actual names over the following years. As of the recording of this video at the end of 2021, Lincoln only sells SUVs and crossovers, with the new Continental only lasting four model years. The Mark series name is gone, and many probably never realized Lincoln tried unsuccessfully to bring it back. But if you ask any fan of Lincoln Car, chances are the Mark series will be among their all-time favorites for many years to come. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid-2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time.